Well, hello everyone, this is Al Fadi. Hope you've been enjoying uh, all of what we have published so far in this particular series on Mecca, A Search for a Place. And hopefully by now, it's becoming very clear to any of you that this notion that Mecca existed before the rise of Islam, that Mecca was a prominent city in the Arabian Peninsula, that Mecca was the center for trade caravan, and the list can go on and on and on, all of it is nothing more than fake news. And I think we have presented to you evidence to support the fact that none of it is actually accurate or even reliable. Today, is exactly the same. We keep adding more evidence to support the correct narrative concerning Mecca. Now, keep in mind, we're not saying Mecca never ever existed. It's not real because Mecca does exist today. But the point is, when did Mecca exist? And what is the connection between Mecca and this notion that Islam started it in the 6th, 7th century period? This is what we're zooming on. This is what we're focused on. With us here today in studio, Dr. J. Dr. J, what are we going to talk about today? Okay, if you have Mecca here, what is Mecca known for? Well, it's known for the pilgrimage. It's known for the Kaaba. It's known for the Hajj, as you call it in Arabic. The Hajj that everybody has to do. You did it whenever you wanted to because you were so close from Jeddah. You just go up there and do... Yeah, doing the Umrah for sure, yeah. yeah just do the circumambulation. Yeah. commemoration. And there are five stages, really major stages, that are part of the Hajj today. What Gibson has done, and this is Dan Gibson's material, he looked at those five stages. Now, he is an expert on Petra, and Petra, he noticed, had every one of those five stages. So let's look at the slide, and let's unpack this. So when you look at the slide, let's, I'm going to do a quick overview, and I want you to listen. I want you to then respond to what you see. So what he found out is that the Kaaba actually existed in Petra, and there's a picture of it, that little red a rectangle was the Kaaba that existed there in Petra. That Kaaba has then re been reproduced for Mecca. And if you look at Azraki's material, Azraki, he noticed, who refers and talks about the dimensions of the Kaaba, the dimensions that he writes about support the Petran Kaaba, not the Meccan Kaaba. The Meccan Kaaba, actually, the, the dimensions are smaller than that which is in Azraki's report. So, which to me gives, uh, assume that my conclusion is, therefore, the Kaaba in Petra is the real Kaaba. He then looked at the Safa and Marwa, these two mountains, and it says very clearly that these are mountains. Those mountains can be found in Petra. When you go down to Mecca today, you've been there, you've seen the Safa and Marwa. They're no mountains, they're just pieces of, I mean, small pieces of rocks at both ends. About 15 foot high. No, that's yeah, not a mountain. Something like that, yeah. In fact, there you can see pictures of them crawling up upon it. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're things that kids would play on if they were right, allowed to. They fence to. them off right now, yeah. They have to fence them off so, yeah. so kids don't play on them. Yeah. But what you notice is those are facsimile, and no, in no notion would you call those mountains. So you can see this is nothing more than an artificial facsimile of what existed prior there in Mecca. We're going to find out some brand new material that Petra is not the original Safa and Marwa. We're finding out new material that's just coming down the pipe that actually Safa and Marwa are in Jerusalem. The original ones were in Jerusalem who were then reproduced and given the names in Petra, which were then reproduced uh, in the 8th century in and Mecca. recreated in Mecca. But in order to have them there, they didn't have mountains. See, listen, when, when uh, a good old... When our, our good friend Hagar went to look for water for her son Ishmael, she went to Safa and Marwa, and that's why you go back and forth, you walk back and forth seven times to commemorate that event. Well, she did not go to two rocks back and forth, she went to two mountains. It's very clear in the in standard Islamic narrative in all the tradition, it are mountains. These are not mountains. So let's move on to the next one, and that's the hill of Ararat. You've talked about the hill of Ararat. That hill of Ararat can be now found in Petra. When you look today, that hill of Ararat, you've been there, that's Kilometers, it's miles away from the Kaaba. They've had to create that as the hill, yeah. and that became the hill now that you had that you use as part of the Hajj. Again, it's You're a fact. You're talking about Arafat here. Arafat, right. yes. Yes. Sorry for my pronunciation. No, no, no. I just want to make sure people can hear it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is pre that already predates in uh in Petra. What else do we know? The Jamarat. The Jamarat in the Quran and is always one pillar, right? Well, it is one basically, uh, th that's right, in the tradition, there is a pillar where you throw stones at the supposed 
location of where the devil was tempting Abraham to disobey God. There is the picture of the foundation of the Jamarat in Petra. The Jamarat has been destroyed because of the earthquake in both, both 560 and then, of course, in 713. That destroyed Petra. That's the foundation of the original Jamarat. So it's there in Petra. But when you go to Mecca today, there's not one Jamarat. There's three Jamarats. Three pillars. That's correct. Uh, do you have three devils? Well, I mean, uh, it's here's the, the way that you would hear an explanation. It represents every... Uh, I mean, a three days journey of Abraham and each one of the pillars represent one of those days. Okay, now when did that that uh, reference or when did that story, when was that invented? Or when well, was that I mean, introduced? Of course, as it is with any Islamic thing, it would have been progressively invented at a later time. Do you know what the date was? Now, there I, I, I guess, maybe 10th, 7th, uh, 10th, 11th century, something. 1980. There you go. No. 1980. We're just talking about 40 years ago. Why? Because the crowds were so big, they could not have just one power. If you look in the 1950, look at photos of Mecca. There's only one Jamarat. Today, there are three to accommodate the large crowd. So what do you do? You create a new narrative to support why you have three. And exactly what you've just told me is, is what you have been told, because that's what you grew up with, that these are three different times when Abraham was confronted by the devil. Right. For three three different stories. Right. That is only 40 years old. So even in our lifetime, they're still creating the narrative. This narrative that existed back then, we're always saying, blaming it on the Abbasids. No, I would suggest even today, if you can see examples of that narrative being created today, then why are we not surprised that this is exactly what the Abbasids did in the 8th and 9th century and 10th century of their ruling? Right. Bingo. So there's the three Jamarats. Now, if the crowds get any bigger, they're going to have to add a fourth and a fifth. We're going to get four and five new more narratives that are going to be added to that. But to me, that just proves my point. The, air, the standard Islamic narrative is still ongoing, even in the 21st century. Then we get to the Zamzam well. We're going to be unpacking more. The next time we get together, I'm going to tell you what we now know about the Zamzam well. We're still doing the research. I don't have it in front of me. I, we don't want to do it. What we now know is the Zamzam well existed in Petra. In fact, there are about five different places in Petra which could be the Zamzam well. However, we have just found in the last three weeks, there's also a Zamzam well in Jerusalem. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Which suggesting to me that this goes right back to Jerusalem. I'm guessing that we are going to probably find all the stages of the Hajj that were Jewish stages. These were all then attributed and taken by the Nabataeans and recreated in Petra, which were then taken by the Abbasids and then recreated down there in Mecca in the 8th century. And it seemed like all of it probably has to do with political issues, why you have competing narratives like this. Political issues, when you look at the Zamzam well today, it, uh, it that cannot accommodate all the pilgrims. You can see, it's just a small little thing. I would like to know when that well was actually dug. No one's going to let me get close to it. No one's going to let anybody get close to it. I would suggest that probably that is a 9th or 10th or maybe even a 12th century well. Not at all from the time of Adam and Eve, as the narrative goes today. And then the black stone. Now, the black stone. I don't know what to say about this stone. Uh, there is going to be a huge amount of videos that I'm going to be doing on this. But what do you know about the black stone? Well, I mean, uh, Jay, the black stone has a prominent, uh, basically, uh, place in the Islamic rituals. I, I wanted to just, if you can go back, uh, people can see this. Yeah, uh, people can see this right here in front of them. Uh, when you go to Mecca, when you go to Mecca, you really strive to try to at least touch the black stone, if not even kiss it, kiss if it. you're good. Take a look if at the you could. here. Yeah, look exactly. Look, they have They're soldiers, kissing. by the way, that control the traffic simply because people fight each other just to get there. Why? I'm, I'm going to actually put a video up. We don't have it with us now when we actually do this again. And I'm going to show you how they're pushing people away. They have to keep them going because there's so many want to kiss yeah. that stone. Yeah. Now, that is on the eastern corner. That's of right. The and, and there is another Yemeni corner, which is just a corner. Uh, it's so smooth that they tell you, oh, it's so smooth because people touch it. Well, I mean, they, they make sure it's smooth. But all that to say, uh, they put a lot of... Uh, uh, incense, uh, I mean, basically, um, uh, you know, uh, perfumes and other things uh, in a black stone to make it smell nice. 
And at the same time, we do this because the Prophet of Islam did this. The Black Stone has this history that when, during the life of Muhammad, when he was still a young, uh, uh, you know, a person before he even became a prophet, that the uh, tribes were fighting to rebuild the Kaaba, and then when they rebuild, uh, I should say, remodeled the, uh, the Kaaba, they were fighting who's going to have the honor of placing this Black Stone, and Muhammad came up with this idea, let's have a piece of rug, you know, and put it, and each corner is carried by one tribe, and therefore, there we go, we solve the problem, all the tribes put the black stone. Why the black stone is important? Well, apparently it was a white, whiter than snow, uh, you know, a stone that fell from heaven and it became dark because of sin. Thank you. You have proved me that there is sin in the world, right? You know, <laughs> that, uh, that uh, you know, sin darkens, you know, our souls and everything else. But here is what I want to share also. We always thought it's one piece of stone, but look, it's multiple pieces right one, there. One, two, there's eight small pebbles. The biggest one is about right. the size of a quarter. And it was stolen a couple of times, and it was destroyed a couple of times, Why and it's glued together. Why are there eight stones and not one stone? Yeah, and, and here's... You know the reason? Right, go ahead. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, well, we'll talk about it. We but I want to say something, uh, you know, to my Muslim uh, friend who are watching this. Folks, I grow up believing Islam is anti-idolatry against al wathaniya the worship of idols and rocks. Please look. How many rocks do you see that are part of the Islamic ritual? Just look. Take a good look at it. And you tell me, does this look like a an anti-idolatry kind of worship? Two, three, four, five different rocks that they're worshiping. The very yeah. thing that Islam says it is one, Tawheed. Exactly. Maybe tawheed that's what the word Tawheed mean, is unification of all of these rocks. Can you imagine Wahab must be rolling in his grave because Wahab, his whole theory, his whole premise was you must not have any worship other than Allah. Allah I mean, yeah. is the only one you can worship. That yet the center of the very center of Islam, the center of all worship is here is the stone that they're all trying to kiss, that you have kissed. That's that right. You have oh, I kissed it many times. Now, there is one more stone that you really, you and I need to consider doing a study on the station of Abraham and the footprints of Abraham. That's another stone that we have to deal with. Good on you. Can you see there's so much more yet to do? The more we scratch, the more we find. The more we find, the more we shine. The more we shine, the more they whine, oh how sublime. We, folks, this is yet to be unpacked. We're, we haven't unpacked yet the Zamzam well or the Safan Marwa or the Black Stone. That is yet to come. And Muslims, you need to listen to this because this is at the very center of your faith. And if your faith is built on idolatry, as we're seeing here, it is not a faith worth defending. But all we're asking is historical questions here. You notice this is not black, right? That's you see right, that's two different colors? Right. You just have a glue on it that makes it black. Ah, yeah. we're going to unpack it why it's not black as well. But that's for another time. That's for the next yeah. time we do these episodes. So the, what we're going to be probably doing next, I want to just do this. I want to just conclude then this whole section. So what do we see in this section? Well, we saw, first of all, that the ancient maps do not show Mecca. So geographically, prob uh, prob that's a huge geographical problem. Maps are how you know where things are. If no map has Mecca on it, if this is the greatest city, and there's no map until 900 AD, that's the 10th century, the first map that has Mecca on it, you've got a problem. We also notice that all of the Qiblas are facing Petra, not Mecca. Yet we know that the, the Qibla was canonized in 624. How is it that up until 727, 100 years later, none of them are facing Mecca? Right. We also found out that the land route theory that Montgomery Watt had used to help the Muslims out was debunked in 1980s and 1987, to be more specific, by Dr. Patricia Corona, who simply looked at maps and then went back to the historical documentation and went back to the trade route uh, receipts and she could read the the receipts in her, the tongue that they were written in. She's the first to do so. She reads and writes 15 languages. He said, this is all fraudulent. None of these receipts mentioned Mecca. They all went through Agilis going across the Western coast. And then we looked at the, the sea routes and we completely debunked the sea routes because the sea routes all are on the African coast. All the ports are on the African coast. The, even the the, the, the channels where the boats went are on the west side. Why? Because that's where the water is. That's where the vegetation is. Nothing on the eastern side, which throws out Jeddah, I'm sorry for your sake, and throws out Mecca. And then we looked at the five stages of the Hutch. These five stages, not one of them was unique to Mecca. They predate in Petra. We're now going to find that that was even predated in Jerusalem. Right. So it looks like the Hajj that you now used to go to from Jeddah to go and practice, that has antecedents 
in Jordan and even antecedents further north in Jerusalem. So uh, as a conclusion, though Mecca has existed according to the standard Islamic narrative since Adam and Eve, chapter 7, verse 24, there is no evidence of it anywhere until 741. And everything we now find in Mecca, we could previously find in Petra. The next time we come together, we'll say we could also find it in Jerusalem. And also, I want to add to this before we conclude, not only that the notion it existed during the time of Adam and Eve, but the fact that Abraham was there. I have to say this. Well, not just Abraham, up to 300 prophets were there right, as well. But, but let's say Abraham alone. The Jews are absolutely so protective of Abraham that they would record anything about him. Why did they miss the fact that he went south all the way to a place like that? Why don't we have even Jewish uh, tribes in the Mecca area? We find them in Yathrib, but we don't find them down there. Actually, what? we don't find Jews in Yathrib. But what I'm saying in the Islamic uh, Robert narrative, Hoyland if you use the Islamic clear. narrative, you know, they, they talk about them in there. They don't talk about them in Mecca. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. The yeah. SSI, the yeah, Sin yeah. narrative. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So so that's that's the thing that we are dealing with, folks. It's uh, the idea that we are just uh, being told things and repeating them like parrots, I'm sorry to use this phrase, are over. I mean, it's over. Time is t Time out. You know, we don't have time for this anymore. It's time for you, my Muslim uh, viewer. You're very smart. You are absolutely smart. You have access to all this data that we're sharing with you. Please do me this favor. Will you at least take one month to do your research and then reach your conclusion your own and ask yourself this question. Does this look like a religion that is anti-idolatry? Does this look like a religion that has solid, sound historical data to back up everything that you believe theologically. I mean, if you don't believe me, just go and watch our series that we did about debunking even the preservation of the Quran. Oh, two, 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 two. That's a whole <laughs> different story. That's a whole different story. And we will revisit it probably one more time. Thank you again. You just stole my signature piece. Uh, I know. I mean, you're going to file a suit against me. You destroyed my city, so that's the best I can do. Yeah, well, sweet. thank you, brother, for your hard work. Thank you for your honesty in sharing uh, research findings and for always striving to make updates. I mean, you do not uh, really uh, say, oh, I did my work and that's it. Uh, you're not the David Kings of the world that visited one mosque. I cannot because I have right? an awful lot of people that hammer me. Yeah. And that's the beauty of YouTube. I get slammed to pieces if I say any, even one date wrong, or if I get one city wrong, or if I get one map wrong. That's why it's good to have something like this where you can look at the all the conclusions we in on one sheet. Go ahead, all of you, take this sheet, print it off, and then just walk through each one of these arguments because each of the arguments is there on one sheet for you to use exactly. in your own work. And we're so thankful, by the way, for the people who hammer uh, uh, Dr. J or hammer me or hammer us uh, over things that mean you're watching, that mean you're paying attention. We welcome that. I mean, we're not against that at all. And we thank you for some of the additional data that you point to us. And we're thankful for some of the uh, honest feedback that we receive from you. Uh, we're not here to say we're perfect, but at the same time, I have yet to see anything that contradicted what we have shared to date. With that in mind, let's wait until the next episode. Now, what's the next episode? We've got to look at their claims. Muslims are coming up with claims about Mecca. There are three major claims that they say prove that Mecca exists, and we're going to debunk all three. You've heard the man. Wait until the next time. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.